Hey, what's up you guys? You are watching the Kaggle Code Review Show and my name is Ilarian Karosas. Today we'll do the Playground Prediction Competition. The name of the competition is Histopathology Cancer Detection. Identify metastatic tissue in histopathologic scans of lymph node sections. It's a computer vision competition, so let's do it together! All of you guys who are watching my videos, please push the like button, subscribe and give me a comment. What can I do for you next? And first of all, we need to overview the competition. So let's read the description. In this competition, you must create an algorithm to identify metastatic cancer in small image patches taken from larger digital pathology scans. The, da uh, the data for this competition is a slightly uh, modified version of the patch Chameleon benchmark dataset. The original uh, PCAM uh, dataset contains duplicate images due to its uh, probabilistic uh, sampling. However, the version presented on Kaggle doesn't contain duplicates. So we can do it by our own. Uh, PCAM is highly interesting for uh, both its size, simplicity to get started on and uh, other. PCAM packs the clinically relevant task of metastatic detection into a straightforward binary image classification task. Models can easily be trained on a single GPU in a couple hours and achieve competitive scores in uh, the Chameleon 16 tasks of tumor detection and whole slide um, image uh, diagnosis. Furthermore, uh, the balance between task uh, difficulty and tract uh, tractability makes uh, it a prime suspect for fundamental machine learning research on topics as active learning, model uncertainty and explainability. Uh, Kekan is hosting this competition for the machine learning community to use for fun and practice. Okay, let's see the evaluation. Uh, so the submissions are evaluated on area under the rock curve between the predicted probability and observed target. Let's uh, look inside the data. In this data set, you are provided with a large number of small pathology images to classify. Files are named with an image ID. Uh, and the name of the file is train label CSV. File provides the ground truth for the images in the train folder. You are predicting the labels for the images in the test folder. A positive label indicates that the center 32 on 32 uh, pixel region of a patch contains at least one pixel of tumor tissue. Tumor tissue uh, in the outer region of the patch doesn't influence the label. This outer region is provided to enable fully convolutional models that don't use zero padding to ensure consistent behavior when applied to a whole slide image. So uh, we've got test images, train images and a, sub a sample submission CSV uh, with uh, labels and file names. Let's dive into the kernel side of this competition. And uh, the name of the kernel is CNN, how to use uh, 160,000 images without crashing. Introduction. In this kernel, I will describe a workflow that allows 160,000 full-size images to be used without crashing the Kaggle kernel. This is made possible by setting up a directory structure and then using generators to feed the data into the model for training, validation and for prediction. We will train the model using uh, 144,000 images and validate on 16,000 images. First of all, it helps to run on the GPU before creating uh, any folders and uh, we would use TensorFlow Keras. Uh, if you use native Keras, then you may get different results. So we would import uh, seed from NumPy. Uh, from TensorFlow, we would take um, a set to random seed, import pandas, NumPy, import TensorFlow uh, with Keras, uh, image, uh, we would import image data generator, convolutional layers, max pooling layers, dense, dropout, flatten, activation, sequential, early stopping, reduce uh, learning rate on plateau, model checkpoint, Adam optimizer, uh, we would import all CSV2, 
uh, CV2, Escalern, uh, Shuffle, uh, Import Shuffle, Confusion uh, Matrix, Train Test Split from Escalern Model Selection, would uh, Import uh, Eater Tools, Shot uh, Eel, Matplotlib uh, to plot uh, and uh, with the magic um, Matplotlib in line. So our image size is uh, 96. Uh, we've got uh, three image channels uh, and uh, the sample size, um, the number of images we use from each of the two classes would be 80,000. Uh, what uh, files are available at our list here? Uh, so we are using os.listdir uh, uh, for input and in the input we would find train, test, train labels and sample submission. So our labels uh, per CSV file is zero for no uh, tumor tissue and one uh, if you uh, if uh, the file has tumor tissue. How uh, many images are in each folder? In train folder we've got uh, to twenty thousand uh, and twenty five. Uh, images and in test uh, folder uh, we've got uh, 57 uh, 458 uh, images. So from all of that we uh, need to create a data frame uh, containing all images so we're reading uh, train labels and uh, after reading we can uh, see the shape of uh, DF uh, data is uh, 220,000. Uh, and so it's the shape of the mm, train labels. And we can check the class distribution uh, by value counts and we would see that on uh, not issue we've got one uh, thirty uh, uh, thousand and uh, for one we've got eighty nine uh, thousands. Uh, 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 now we can display a random uh, sample of train images by class. So you see the uh, images uh, in train uh, path. Uh, we would use draw category images. Uh, so here it is. It's uh, four images for no tissue and four images for tissue. And now we uh, would create the train and uh, validation sets. Uh, so let's see uh, the head of the uh, DF data. So we got the ID of image and the label on uh, this ID. Uh, and uh, let's balance the target distribution. So we will reduce the number of samples in class uh, zero. And after the reducing, uh, Mm, we would con uh, concatenate uh, the new date frames. So we would concatenate uh, DF0 and DF1, uh, where we would use a sample size uh, for sampling, reset index, and shuffle. And after that, we would uh, reuse the number of samples in class 0 and balance the target, target distribution. And we can really uh, count the uh, new DF data. Uh, uh, data frame uh, with our labels. Uh, so for one, we've got uh, the equal uh, number of um, number of uh, samples, uh, eighty thousand. Now we can see the DF data head. So we've got labels with uh, one and zero for different IDs. But now. Uh, this uh, data set is uh, balanced. And we would use the new uh, data set to make the train and validation data sets. Uh, we would use train test split with a test size uh, 0.1 and uh, we would stratify uh, so we have a balanced validation set. After this, we can see the shape of the new sets DF train and DF uh, validation. So uh, they uh, are one forty-four thousand and one uh, and sixteen thousand. And 
value counts on uh, and uh, uh, the DF train and DF uh, well are balanced with one and zero with the, our labels. After that, we can uh, create uh, a directory structure. So we'd um, use our train deer. Uh, we would create two folders inside base deer. So we would create the train deer. Uh, and validation deer and uh, would uh, put uh, different uh, pictures from uh, from our base deer to these folders and we we'll do this by uh, by using our um, train deer split uh, so here is the code so we can create folders inside the train and validation folders create new folders inside train deer and create new folders inside uh, validation deer. So we're uh, creating new folders and we're checking that the folders have been created. And after that we can transfer the images into the folders because uh, we've got all the indexes and uh, labels on different um, files. So we are getting a list of train and validation images. Uh, then uh, just uh, by this list we can transfer the train images. So it's a base for loop for image in train list. We are transferring uh, uh, the images by uh, copy file. We are transferring uh, the train images and the validation images. And at the end, uh, we can check how many train images we have in each folder. And uh, the same, we can check how many uh, validation images we have in each folder. After that, we can, uh, we, uh, our data is prepared for um, set up the generators. Would use Keras uh, generators So what are our inputs for the generators? We've got a train pass, a valid pass, the test pass with our um, test um, files for submission. And uh, we've got uh, numbers of train samples, numbers of validation samples. We would uh, use 10 for train batch uh, size and 10 for validation batch size. And uh, here is a formula for train steps. Uh, we would uh, divide uh, num train uh, samples by train batch size. It would be our train steps and the same for validation steps. Then we would use uh, image data generator and we would rescale our RGB files with this. Uh, so we can make the train generator for our model and it's a date again uh, that flow from directory we got a train path target size batch size and the class mode uh, the same for validation generator and uh, we are the same for the test uh, generator but we wouldn't shuffle uh, shuffle the samples in the uh, test generator. So now we can, uh, our generators are ready and we can create the model art, uh, architecture. Uh, the auto use the CNN architecture presented uh, by F. Marazzi in this kernel. So we would use the kernel size 3x3, three three, pool size 2x2, two two, first filters 32. Uh, filters, second filter 64, third filter uh, 128, drop out for the convolution point 3 and drop out for dense uh, layer point 3. Sequential model, uh, the first layer convolution 2D with a relative activation where the input shape 96 to, uh, by 96, three channels. Then we're using convolution 2D with Rello, convolution 2D with Rello, max pooling, uh, dropout. Then we uh, use convolution 2D with the second filters, 
conversion to D with second filters and uh, conversion to D with second filters, max pooling, drop out the same for the third filters. And at the end of this uh, neural network, we would use flatten, dance with uh, 250 uh, six neurons and the relay activation, drop out with a drop out dance and uh, dance uh, layer with two uh, neurons and the activation softmax for, classif uh, for classification. So here is the model summary. Uh, and the total par uh, parameters is 1 million uh, six, uh, 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 661 uh, parameters uh, and uh, all the parameters are trainable. So now we can uh, compile the model with the Adam optimizer and uh, learning rate uh, uh, and the learning rate. So for the loss we would use binary cross entropy and our metrics would be accuracy. Uh, callbacks, we would use model checkpoint. Uh, we would monitor validation accuracy and uh, we would uh, reduce learning rate on plateau uh, with these parameters. Uh, so our callback list is a checkpoint and uh, reduce learning rate. And we can uh, fit the model with these parameters and uh, for 20 epochs and all our inputs. When we uh, evaluate the model using, the, uh, when we uh, fitted uh, the model, uh, trained the model, we can see the metrics. So our final validation uh, loss is uh, 0.15 and validation accuracy is pretty good. It's 0.94. Um, Let's uh, plot the training curves. Uh, here is our training and validation loss and it's decreasing. It's decreasing for training loss uh, and going to the plateau to the validation loss and uh, training and validation accuracy is increasing and going on the plateau for the uh, validation. After that, uh, we can uh, make a prediction on the validation set and uh, uh, see the predictions and uh, calculate the AUX score rock AUX score, it would be uh, 98, create a confusion matrix, uh, here you see we can plot it, uh, here you see the confusion matrix, uh, we can create uh, from uh, SQLN matrix we can uh, import classification report and create a classification report, here you see it precision, recall F1 and uh, recall uh, and uh, make a test set prediction, just the same, we can uh, just the same uh, as we have made for the train and validation uh, sets, we can do the same to the test set set up the generator, make a prediction on the test images, uh, put the predictions uh, into a data frame and uh, after that we can uh, we can make a submission file with uh, all of our predictions on the test data set. And I found this kernel uh, with Marsh in Johannesburg, it's uh, South Africa. So it's a notebooks expert, discussion expert, data sets, uh, data sets expert. So thank you Marsh.